so I'm going to talk about firm organization with multiple establishments, and this is joint work with Henrike Steimer and Manfred Antoni. So um, large firms very often are multi-establishment firms. That means they hire employees in different establishments that are typically at different geographic locations. And they do so to exploit factor price differences between locations or to be closer to their customers. Now, a recent literature has documented the distance between the establishments of these firms and their headquarters has a significantly negative effect on establishment performance. And this is reminiscent of the fact that we know from the multinational firms literature of gravity of multinational firm affiliate sales. So the, the fact that the farther away a country is from the headquarter country of a multinational firm, the lower the foreign affiliate sales are. And now in the literature on multi-establishment firms, the main potential reason that is discussed for this negative effect of distance on establishment performance is that distance causes managerial friction. So distance makes it more difficult for the managers and the headquarters to manage the establishments. So to illustrate this with a simple example, think about a firm that's headquartered in Munich and that has an establishment in East Germany. Now, the idea is that the geographic frictions between Munich and East Germany make it more difficult for the CEO in the headquarters to help the employees and the establishment solve problems that come up in the production process. For example, because the CEO has to travel on site to do so, and this traveling costs time. Now, in our paper, we take this idea seriously and ask, well, if that's so, do firms respond to this? This And in particular, do they adjust their organizational structure in response to geographic frictions? So in our paper, we ask, how do geographic frictions affect firm organization? And so before I go into the details of our answer to this research question, let me illustrate the main idea um, of our answer in the framework of the simple example that I just mentioned. So we have this headquarters in Munich and the establishment in East Germany, and we have the geographic friction that makes it difficult for the CEO in the headquarters to manage the establishment. And in addition, we assume that the CEO is time constrained. So the CEO has only one unit of time available. And now these geographic frictions between the headquarters and the establishment imply that the CEO has to spend a disproportionate share of her time on the establishment. And that's problematic because only very little time is left for the headquarters. Now, what the firm can do in response to this situation is it can adjust its organizational structure by hiring a middle manager at the establishment in East Germany. Now, this middle manager is competent, not as competent as the CEO, but competent enough to solve the most common problems that come up in the production process. And so the middle manager at the establishment in East Germany allows the CEO to reduce the amount of time um, that she spends on the establishment, and thus the middle manager mitigates the impact of geographic frictions. And what is more, um, the middle manager releases CEO time that the CEO can then reallocate to the headquarters. And so in result, hiring a middle manager at the establishment in East Germany increases from performance at the establishment, but also at the headquarters. Now in the paper, we systematically developed this idea in three steps. Um, in the first part of the paper, we show descriptive facts on multi-establishment firm organization. Um, in the second part of the paper, we use those facts to inform a model of multi-establishment firm organization. And then in the third part of the paper, we take a prediction from the model back to the data and provide evidence and reorganization of multi-establishment firms after the opening of new high-speed train routes. Taken together, these three parts of the paper yield two main results. The first result that we show is that geographic frictions increase the use of middle managers in multi-establishment firms. And the second fact, result that we show is that geographic frictions affect the organization of both the establishment and the headquarters. And these two result, results have two important implications. So the first implication is that in multi-establishment firms, organization should be studied at the firm level. So even if you are interested in understanding the organization of different units, um, you shouldn't study these units in isolation, but you should always study the units in the context of the overall firm because the organization of the units are interdependent. And then the second implication is that multi-establishment firms propagate shocks to local conditions across space through their organization because changes to local conditions are going to change the organizational structure of the local establishment, but also the organizational structure of the headquarters and through the headquarters, the organization of possible other establishments that the firm may have. 
So let's start with the facts on multi-establishment firm organization. The backbone of our paper is a linked firm establishment employee data set that is based on German social security records. Um, the data set is a panel for the years 2000 through 2012. And much of what you'll see in the following comes from the 2012 cross section where we have 10,000 multi-establishment firms um, that employ 2.2 million employees. So these tend to be really large um, firms. Now, our main, uh, the main variable of interest in our study is the organizational structure. And we measure the organizational structure by the number of managerial layers that these firms have. So we follow the methodology in Caliendo, Monte, and Rossi Hansberg and assign the employees in our data set to four layers based on their occupation. So the top layer consists of CEOs and managing directors. Um, in the second layer, we have senior experts and upper middle managers, and then it basically goes down until in the bottom layer, we have clerks, operators, and production workers. And in the paper, we validate um, this assignment of occupations to layers using additional survey data that allow us to really show that employees that are assigned to different layers based on their occupation really um, uh, carry out different types of tasks um, in their day-to-day uh, -day occupations. Now we use those data to answer three questions about multi-establishment firm organization. The first question that we answer is where do multi-establishment firms invest? And we find that the investment probability and the establishment size decrease with the distance often is of a location from the headquarters um, of the multi-establishment firm. And I'm going to skip the evidence for this first fact here because it's basically similar to this gravity of multinational firm activities that is very well documented in the multinational firm literature. The second question that we answer is how do geographic frictions affect the managerial organization of multi-establishment firms? And we show that the use of middle managers increases with the geographic frictions. Now, we show this by running a set of Poisson regressions where our dependent variable is the number of managerial layers of these firms. And the main independent variable of interest are different measures for geographic frictions. We control for firm size because we know from the work from um, Caliendo, for example, or Rossi Hansberg and others, um, that size is an important determinant of the managerial organization. And then we also control for a bunch of fixed effects. And now this figure shows you the regression results for our measures of geographic frictions if we take um, or if we use sales as a measure for size. You see the results of two different regressions. So in the top, um, you see um, the results when we use the maximum log distance to the headquarters as our measure of geographic frictions. And in the bottom, we use the area that is spanned by the headquarters and the establishments of the firm. And so we can compute the area once the firm has at least um, two establishments because you need three points um, to compute an area. Now, what the figure shows you is that no matter how we measure geographic frictions, higher geographic frictions increase the number of managerial layers of firms. And these effects aren't just statistically significant, they're also economically meaningful because they imply that doubling the maximum distance to the headquarters is associated with the same increase in the number of layers as increasing sales by a third. So geographic frictions seem to be an important determinant of the managerial organization in addition um, to firm size. And then given these um, cross-sectional facts, um, we exploit the panel dimension of our data to study how the managerial organization evolves over time. And we find that multi-establishment firms add middle managers either at the headquarters or the establishments as they grow, but very rarely do they add managerial layers at both types of um, units at the same time. And this is summarized in the following figure. So for this figure, we've restricted the sample to firms that change their managerial structure from one period to the next. And so among those firms, about half of them change the number of layers only at the headquarters, Another 40% change the number of layers only at the establishments, and only about 9% change the number of layers at the headquarters and the establishments at the same time. And so what this suggests is that um, the organizational structure is a decision that the firm takes specifically for each of its individual units. So there doesn't seem to be a blueprint that the firm just applies to each unit, but the organizational structure is a decision that the firm takes um, deliberately and specifically for each of its different units. 
Now, in the second part of the paper, we use those facts to inform a model of multi-establishment firm organization. And I don't have, I mean, 20 minutes is just not enough to convey any amount of detail um, of the model. So what I'll try to do is at a very high level, um, convey the main intuition for the model results. I'm kind of skipping a lot of um, detail. Um, even for this high level, of course, um, we need to look a little bit at uh, the assumptions that we're making. So in the model, we consider a setting where we have two potential locations. Both locations have separate local labor markets with wages that may differ between locations and separate local output markets, where for now we take as exogenously given the amount of output that the firm would like to supply. And this reflects the cost cutting and um, kind of market seeking motives for having several establishments that I alluded to in the introduction. Now the firms in our model consists of headquarters and possibly an establishment. So this is an endogenous choice whether or not the firm would like to have an establishment and the firms choose their optimal organization. Now in choosing the optimal organization, the firms have to take into account that production is a problem solving process that is based on labor and knowledge and both the labor input and the knowledge input are endogenously chosen. The labor input generates problems and the knowledge input is used to solve the problems to produce output. So labor and knowledge are endogenously chosen complementary production factors. Now, all of our firms consist of a CEO and production workers, and they can endogenously choose whether or not they would like to have middle managers. Now, the production workers um, constitute the bottom of the hierarchy. So they input labor in the production process, so they generate problems, but they also have some knowledge, so they also solve part of the problems. The CEO is the top of the hierarchy, and she's the most knowledgeable employee of the firm. And she uses her knowledge to help the workers solve problems in the production process, but this helping activity costs time and the CEO has only one unit of time available. So you can think about the CEO as a resource of limited supply to the firm. And now the firm can choose to um, hire a layer of middle managers um, that help the workers in place of the CEO, but these middle managers entail a quasi fixed cost because they have to be paid. And we capture geographic frictions in this framework by assuming that geographic frictions increase the helping cost for the CEO to help the employees at the establishment compared to um, how costly it is to help the employees at the headquarters. Now, as I said, we have to remain at a kind of very high level of abstraction. Um, so the research question of the paper is to understand the effect of geographic frictions on firm organization. Now to understand this, it's useful to first assume away geographic frictions and simply ask how do changes in output affect the organizational structure in this setting. And so to understand this, it's useful to think about the organizational structure as a production technology. So we have one possible organizational structure that's the CEO and production workers, another that is the CEO, production workers and middle managers. And you can think about the structure with CEO and production workers as a low fixed cost, high marginal cost technology and the structure with CEO, production workers, and middle managers as a high fixed cost, low marginal production cost technology. And now, of course, um, by self-selection, small firms are going to go with a low fixed cost, high marginal cost production technology, and the large firms are going to move to the high fixed cost, low marginal cost production technology. A specificity of the multi-establishment firms is that they can combine technologies. So they can choose different organizational structures at the headquarters and the establishments. And it's actually beneficial to do so. It's beneficial to hire a middle manager only at one unit because that entails a lower quasi fixed cost. But it's beneficial for both units of the firm for the very same intuition that I alluded to in the introduction, because then the CEO can reallocate her time from the unit where you hire the middle manager to the other unit. And so um, taken together, this implies that the model predicts that small firms are going to have a CEO and production workers, medium sized firms are going to hire middle managers at only one unit, and the large firms are going to hire middle managers at both units. And so in result, the model predicts that multi establishment firms add middle managers either at the headquarters or the establishment as they grow. Now, how do geographic frictions come into the picture? So geographic frictions are captured by the helping cost. And a first thing to note is that the higher helping cost in this model 
um, are going to affect the choices at the establishment, but also at the headquarters. And that's the case because, um, yes, because um, the establishment and the headquarters share a CEO. And so if helping costs increase at the establishment, the firm reorganizes in a way that drives up the marginal production costs at the establishment, but reduces the marginal production costs at the headquarters. And due to these higher marginal costs at the establishment, it's um, kind of useful for the firm, or it's optimal for the firm to move to the high fixed cost, low marginal cost technology at a lower amount of output. So it's useful for the firm to hire middle managers at a lower amount of output, which is how the model um, rationalizes that geographic frictions increase the use of middle managers. And on top, we can show that based on this effect of higher helping costs on the marginal cost of production, higher helping costs are going to lead to lower establishment output, but to higher headquarter output. Now, I'm not gonna go into detail, uh, into, yeah, into detail um, on the summary slide. Basically the slide says the model can rationalize all facts that we show in the descriptive part of the paper. Um, and uh, we have this um, additional model result um, that uh, predicts, so the model predicts that geographic frictions are going to affect the organization of both the establishments and the headquarters. And it's this prediction that we take to the data in the final part of our paper. So in the final part of our paper, we use the opening of three new high-speed train routes as extraordinary variation of geographic frictions within multi-establishment firms. We got data on the travel time changes from Deutsche Bahn AG, so the state-owned German railway firm. Um, and these data allow us to really measure how these new high-speed train routes affected travel times within multi-establishment firms. So you have a map here um, of the long-distance railway network in Germany, and in red you have the new high-speed train routes. And um, these routes really brought down significantly the travel time between cities. So for example, between Cologne and Frankfurt, you can travel in 75 minutes. Um, that was a reduction by 44% and it's competitive compared to the car. And this is also reflected in the fact that business travelers do use those routes. What's nice for us is that the German railway network is very interconnected. So these high-speed train routes affect many more cities than just the cities at the immediate ends. So for example, the route between Cologne and Frankfurt also affects cities in the Ruhr area, such as Essen, and um, cities in the south of Germany, such as Stuttgart. Now we want to test this model prediction that um, lower helping costs affect the organization of both the establishments and the headquarters. And one thing to keep in mind is that um, the model predicts that changes in the helping costs are going to have two effects. So we're going to have a direct effect on the organization, conditional on output, but we also have an indirect effect because changes in the helping costs change the marginal cost of production and thus they change optimal output and output also has an effect on firm organization. Because we don't observe output in our data, we cannot disentangle the two different channels, but the, the prediction that we take to the data is that the lower travel times should affect the organization of the headquarters and all establishments of the firm. Now, this is a slide on, um, on the regression equation. I won't go too much into detail here. So basically we run different and different type of regressions. And we study the effect of the lower travel times on better connected establishments. So does their organization change? But we also study the effect on the headquarters and on establishments that don't get themselves better connected, but that may belong to firms where at least one other establishment gets connected to capture those kind of spillover um, effects, if you will. Now, these are our regression results. Um, I show you the results for firms that have at least two establishments because only for those it makes sense to look at establishments that are not themselves affected. Um, on the top of the table, you see the results for the better connected establishment. The middle of the table shows you the results for the headquarters and the bottom shows the results for not directly affected establishments. And in the first column, you see the results for firm size or establishment size, the number of workers. Um, the middle shows you the number of layers, and then we also have the managerial share. Now, the top results show that establishments that get better connected to their headquarters grow significantly faster than establishments that don't get better connected. But they don't change their organization. And this is interesting with view to the literature, because based on the results in the literature, you would expect that if an establishment grows, it also increases its number of layers because size is an important determinant of the managerial organization. 
So this result suggests that as the, as the establishment grows due to the lower travel times, um, there seems to be kind of a counteracting negative effect. So, so, so the growth would have a positive effect on the number of layers, and there seems to be a counteracting negative direct effect of um, the lower helping costs on the number of layers. Now, the middle pattern shows you the results on the headquarters. We don't see changes in, firm, in, in, in headquarters size, um, but we see that the headquarters increase the number of layers and also the managerial share, which suggests that the firms do reorganize, but they don't reorganize the establishments, but they do reorganize the headquarters. And similarly, we see that um, the firms reorganize the establishments that don't get themselves get better connected, but that do belong to firms where at least another establishment um, gets better connected. Okay. So let me wrap up. Um, in this paper, we ask how geographic frictions affect firm organization. And we show that geographic frictions increase the use of middle managers and firms. This is a contribution to the organization's economics literature, so the literature on firm hierarchies and the literature on management practices. And we also show that multi-establishment firm organization is interdependent across the headquarters and the establishments. And this is the contribution to the literature that studies the propagation of shocks through multi-establishment firms, because this literature has so far focused on financial constraints as a reason for um, uh, this propagation. And it's also a contribution to the literature on multi-establishment and multinational firm performance, um, because it kind of rationalizes why we see this um, negative effect of distance or geographic frictions on establishment and uh, also foreign affiliate performance in the data. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, a very interesting presentation. I see already there are two questions. Can you turn off your screen sharing yes. so that I can see the complete panel? So let's give, let me give priority to the question from the other participants. We have a question by Wolfgang Keller first, who says, who thinks your paper is very interesting. And uh, what about establishment relocation instead of adding manager? It would seem that the policy concern is a lot about plants relocating from East Germany to Poland or China compared to adding middle managers. So essentially, this is whether you are considering plant mobility rather than or along with uh, a manager, adding managers layers and changing the management structure. That's the first mm -hmm. question. Anna. So this is a very interesting question, but it's um, a question that we don't study. Um, I can nevertheless say something about it. So we see, we do indeed see in the data that establishments move. Um, but for our empirical analysis, we kind of fix them at the initial location. So of course, kind of if you look at something if, as at an infrastructure measure, such as this opening of high-speed train routes, one concern is that firms may kind of strategically locate close to the route, either a new establishment or they move the establishment. And so um, kind of as far as the paper is concerned, we uh, are careful to take that into account by looking at the initial location of the establishment. So our results should be robust to that possibility. But it's, um, it's right to conjecture that this happens. So we see that happening in the data that establishments move from one location to another. We haven't systematically explored, however, whether they move to the high-speed train route or kind of which aspects kind of govern um, this mobility of establishments. But this is certainly something that we could do in future work. So in a sense, thank you for um, bringing up this idea. Yes, and Badish Tabar Tabarki is bringing in the issue of firm heterogeneity. So the question is whether the effect would be different, the impact of geography would be different or firm specific, depending on the characteristics of the firms, like larger or smaller. Mm -hmm. Again, this is a very interesting question. So. Um, in the hierarchies literature as kind of a rule of thumb, all effects are um, heterogeneous. So they depend on kind of firm size. Um, we don't focus on firm heterogeneity. So I don't feel comfortable kind of making too strong a statement of in which direction this effect would go. But um, this is also certainly something that we could look at. Yeah. Thank you. And Francis Kramarts has a question. Francis, go ahead. Yes, uh, thank you, uh, Giorgio. Anna, could you tell us the difference between your paper and the already published paper in the EJ by uh, Charnoz, Le Large, mm -hmm. and uh, we use we have the same kind of feeling, but what do you bring to the table? Mm -hmm. So, um, so we are very close to the paper by Charnoz, Le Large, and Trevien. I think is the third co-author. Um, 
So several things. So the first thing is that our paper is broader in a sense that um, it does have this theory. So, so the paper by Charnot and Corsos is a kind of purely empirical paper that in its theoretical motivation alludes to um, firm organization motives and kind of knowledge hierarchies as a possible reason for why um, we should see an effect of geographic frictions on multi-establishment firm organizations, but they don't really kind of work it out um, in their paper. Um, but in terms of kind of the third part of the paper, this um, analysis of high-speed train routes on firm organizations, actually our two papers are quite close and the regression equations, for example, are very similar. One difference that I think is of some importance is that we look at multi-establishment firms, so our different establishments aren't independent units. So um, Charnot and Corthus, they have um, business groups, so they, they know kind of there's, it's kind of closer to multinational firms what they study, so it's kind of multi-unit business groups within, within France that then are shocked by, you know, these high-speed train routes. Um, and in our case, the establishments aren't legally independent from each other. So, um, so yeah, so that's a difference. But in terms of kind of um, the empirical results, what we do is similar, and I view the two papers as complementary. So I was actually very happy because in a way the Charnot paper um, tells me that, you know, what we find is robust, even if you go to another country and you look in uh, in another sum. And a very interesting paper, thanks. Um, I'm a bit, uh, uh, let's say, surprised by your result that you do not find any evidence on uh, the number of layers for those firms that are affected uh, positively by the speed reduction. I think uh, Alice Forza has a paper where he shows on Portugal that he has a financial friction uh, story uh, and it shows that there is an effect on the reorganization of the firm uh, in terms of layers so that, that there is a change in the middle manager yes but that 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 by definition would have a change also in terms of the number of layers or the density of the layers so um, I was wondering whether it's just that since you measured the number of layers but maybe not the average density of workers in each layer that you might just get more or less time on shape structures rather than simply adding or getting rid of the number of layers, uh, because it's a, it's a kind of a surprising result. Mm -hmm. So thank you for this question. I think I may have been a little bit too quick. So at the firm level, we do see changes in the number of layers, but I actually haven't shown the firm level results. So where we don't see um, effects on the number of layers is when we look at the directly affected establishments. So the establishments that get themselves better connected to the headquarters, they grow but they don't change the organization. And that's actually consistent with the model in a sense that, um, that you have a positive effect through firm size, but you the model would predict a negative effect on the number of layers through the helping cost, and these two effects seem to cancel. But we do see that the headquarters add layers. And so if we run the analysis at the firm level, we do see that the firms actually increase their number of layers. So, and in that sense, it's consistent uh, with the literature. But I'm sorry about the confusion. And unfortunately, there is an extra question from Gabor Bekesh, but it's uh, too late to answer it. I'll put it to you just so that you can okay. bring it home and then maybe answer privately whether the yes. theory says anything about whether it's the uh, headquarters or the affiliate who would hire the middle managers. Okay. So that, oh, okay. Yes. That's also a question that I can't answer in one sentence. So that's a little bit uh, more involved. Yeah. So thank you very much, everybody, for questions and uh, comments. Uh,